All right. Uh, sorry for the uh, delay, and thank you for having me. I would like to thank the organizer for having me uh, invited to the conference, and also to my predecessor to speakers, because they actually great the, did the great introduction to my talk. First, Vlad, when he uh, exposed you to the topic of uh, fake news and influence operation, and second, the graph theory, which is heavily used in my talk as well. So I am able to skip to the juicy part, and I will do. My name is Jindřich Karasek. Uh, the name is difficult for most of the people not from Czech Republic, so it's okay to call me whenever you like. And I was cyber threat hunter in Trend Micro. My job was to look to the client telemetry, mostly using Splunk and other tools and seek emerging threats and help to build the detections. But I wanted more because this job can be partially automated, so I was searching for more and more border cases which helped me to learn more and more about APT groups and cybercrime. And that still wasn't enough, so I wanted to contribute to some uh, security posture of my country, uh, of European Union, of NATO. And I did, and I will show you how I did it. So, our adversary, which is a crucial part of my story, is a certain federation that's called the APT Actor here, and it syndicated it their uh, wrongdoings with cybercrime gangs. They are using capabilities such as data mining, social mapping, micro-targeting, all the stuff you heard from Vlad, using the infrastructure like social media platforms, they're using marketing tools and cloud-based data storage to attack the victim, which is the general public in the enemy countries, which means uh, the countries they are willing to control using their influence operations, which happens to be my country, which upsets me a lot, so I decided that I will do something about it. Well, my plan is first show you the big picture and then following the model of so-called ODA loop, I will show you how I... Uh, Build the case, how I contributed with some analysis, observations, and I will also show you how you can do it. Okay, so uh, my point of view is that how this whole talk is based on uh, the fact that uh, you can build the influence operations and information warfare using cyber tools. And since I happen to be cyber threat hunter, this is my domain. So all the points and perspectives you will hear from me are only from this very point of view, the intersection between cyber warfare, information warfare, and cognitive warfare. So uh, I just want to warn you that I'm not able to answer any questions like from geopolitical point of view. Uh, that's really not my intention. I care mostly about the cyber warfare part of this job. This is so-called ODA loop, and I just want to say that all my slides will be available to you after the talk, and I designed them in a way that you will be reading them afterwards. My goal with this presentation is to spark your interest and maybe make you join the effort somehow and make you interested about the topic in general. So you don't need to read all the slides as I'm showing them because they will be fully available. Well, first, the observe part. Why did I choose the web? Web is uh, crucial, well, it's intersection in the influence operations because all the data that are flowing in, in, during the uh, influence operations done by the threat actor in the enemy countries are somehow crossing the websites be it uh, streaming services from uh, linked from the Telegram groups or uh, some links that are distributed via chain emails or even the uh, paid ads that are the core of my presentation. It's all like, uh, it's all based on the website. So I decided that I call my talk the web of cognitive warfare because of the fact that there are also plenty of existing tools for the marketing, I didn't need to reinvent so many wheels. So for parts of the research, I'm using existing tools like Facebook tracking, pixels, and so on. 
if you research the influence operations on done doing uh, done on websites, you may notice that uh, there are some uh, repeating patterns that are called UX dark patterns. The aim of the patterns is to manipulate you to certain behavior. Uh, there's several uh, big groups of uh, dark patterns that are available and used out there. So, for instance, fear appeals. It, uh, during the COVID, you may have seen some scandals information about the vaccines and about the invention of the virus in the labs and other misinformation. So this, this was just the goal to appeal on the fear to make you emotional and more susceptible to trusting all other informations that is present on the website. And I can continue like this for quite a long time, but we don't have the space to do it. So I just wanted to put this to your attention that if uh, you are interested, you should research dark patterns on the website. There's more phenomena like uh, that you should uh, care about, like narrative, overtone window, memes, and so on. I have separate talk for this, and in fact, next week I'm having a workshop for future diplomats, and I will show them how to use AI in analyzing the data they are facing to be able to spot these manipulative uh, phenomena that may influence them in their future jobs. So just check, it's uh, more uh, explained in the appendix because we don't have time to go through this. And now I will start with the actual uh, findings in the wild. So if I'm speaking about influence operations or cognitive warfare, it sounds like big uh, scary, but it looks like this. Starting from the left, the embassy of Russia in Bangladesh uh, so read or published some time ago this cute picture about Russian Federation being the protector of whole Christian realm against Nazis, US, European Union, NATO, and of course the biggest threat of them all, LGBT. Then in the middle there is this uh, body shaming picture that I can see in a lot of groups that are involved in influence operations and it's uh, the aim of this picture is to show the aesthetical and moral decay of global West as this is one of the main narratives spread in Russia to domestic, uh, to, to domestic uh, audience to like make them uh, well, basically, make them not flee the country, if I oversimplify this. And, of course, there is Mr. Zelensky asking for more money, being junky, and this is favorite narrative in my country, and you would be surprised, but over 27% of population of Czech Republic actually believes that he's a drug addict and that he should not lead the country because of the cognitive warfare that we are facing. Last but not least is this uh, clash between Islam and Christianity and I have taken this meme from the far right group uh, from France when I was trying to research the information landscape uh, during the Olympic Games. Because there were some tendencies that my threat actor tried to manipulate people to radicalize youngsters to commit some crimes in physical war during the Games making, like, uh, damaging the PR of the country itself. This is something that is ongoing in my country, and it has three different uh, stages or phases. First phase is on the picture, on the slide, and it's, all, it's the story that tells you that some famous person, like politically exposed person, like our former prime minister, president, uh, head of country intelligence agency or some famous actors that they all got to trouble by revealing some secret how to get rich by gaining passive income. This uh, resonates in our country a lot, of course, because the times are not that great and many people do search other opportunities how to get rich or at least survive. So this, this is a strong narrative. But there are more. Uh, if uh, you do not fail for this, or actually if you fail for this, and it's of course the scam that I will explain later, then there is another story which says the police is hunting the scammers that stolen the money from you, so you should give them your uh, data so they are able to proceed with the investigation and reimburse you. 
And there's even a third level, if you are so desperate that you get scammed for the second time. The third stage is that a country intelligence agency is hunting failed, failed sorry, fake policemen and fake lawyers who tried to help you with the case. So again, give us all the data and the information you had and we will help you reimburse the money. And we have like hundreds and hundreds of cases of people who failed the victim for the three consecutive times in this scam because uh, people are more and more desperate. If they got scammed for the first time, they are usually losing most of their life savings. So they are not in the clear state of the mind. So they search desperately any kind of help. If they are scammed for the second time, they invested even more money. And then there is this uh, bias uh, about losing the investment. So they would rather invest more into getting uh, their money back than admitting that they failed for the scam and just to leave it. So this is extremely successful influence operation. I was, uh, and I still am, coordinating some works with the local Czech law enforcement. So I know from Czech police that uh, currently the gains of these gangs are close to tens of millions of thousands of dollars. And I remind you that population of Czech Republic is roughly 11 million people. So it's a successful campaign. And what's there for the threat actor? So it starts with the paid ads promotion on social media. They promote the website that looks like a local news or uh, or blog or s some sort of uh, media sharing uh, website, but it's really shallow and all the links that are uh, present on the website point to the investment platform. These uh, ads are commented by Sock Puppet accounts. They, they comment, they like it, and I noted over time that they are more and more uh, believable. These accounts are uh, used to be those, you know, fakes that you could spot from miles away. But right now, really, these accounts look like real that even myself, I have hard times to spot it. And more than several times, I realized that they are using compromised accounts from other company. So th there is this link between uh, stealing accounts on social network and using them for promotion in this influence operation. Yeah, and since uh, that's how social media works, so once you clicked on the one ad, then it starts to feed you more and more related content and more and more investment opportunities, which is bad because you may not fail for it for the first time, but as you see it so many times all along the different variations, then you may start to think, oh, maybe I, I can get rich and maybe I should do it. So it works really well. Yeah. So most, most of the people who get a lot of these uh, ads in a row actually click on it and try to move forward in the scam because they of course do not know it's, they are being scammed and they are just trying like it, they will not invest a lot of money, but just a few, but then they lose it. So they want to gain it back and you know, it's cause circle. But then the threat actor uses this kind of data. They are able to collect, to harvest it, uh, as Vlad said as well, because goal of this operation is first to gain the finances and second to collect the data about targeted uh, population. So they are able to model the behavior and predict our actions like in case of uh, election changes or civic unrest or even the full-scale invasion. Yeah, uh, these data that they are using are processed in the cloud, JavaScripts, they use trackers, and this is the part which my inner CTI analyst is happy about because I'm able to intervene in here and I'm able to do something about the, uh, the company. Well, output for the threat actor is that they have a detailed model about the targeted population and they can, in ideal, in their, their mission focus is to, mod, to create the mathematical model of the population and act on it. Uh, if you are front of the sound framework, then you may like this picture as well. 
it's uh, like what is my threat to to cyber threat hunting and to to analysis of the techniques tactics and procedures of cyber criminals that is uh, the sun foundation and this uh, the sun framework for influence operations so i mapped the techniques in case you would see something similar in your country so you are able to follow up on my research and i really dare you to do it because this is quite important well, I wanted to learn more, so I used Meta Ed's library and I start to search for the personas that they were using in their campaigns. Uh, for instance, our former Prime Minister Babish is re really polarizing persona in my country because part of the nation loves him, part of the nation hates him, and for the good reasons, you can guess what parts uh, I, I belong. And the campaign using his name is extremely powerful. They are targeting people between 35 and 65 years. And each of the ads has at least 11,000 hits on the Facebook. And there is hundreds of them. So I can directly measure that they are able to reach most of the population of Czech Republic that is present on Facebook in this case. I needed to automate stuff. So since uh, Meta Ads library has uh, API that allows me to interact with J in JSON format, I in, I'm using these four AI NLP tricks to be able to determine what is the political campaign that is legit for that persona and what is the f fake uh, advertisement done by the threat actor. And it helps me to save a lot of the time and the sanity because I may not want to admit, but every, every one of us is susceptible to cognitive warfare. So there is a strong risk that if I would read a lot of ads like this, I may even start to believe it on myself or I may turn to some other narrative that is the actor spreading. Well, you know, sentiment analysis, and it, uh, I use it a lot as well in other researches, not just this campaign, because it helps me to spot the new occurrences of the campaign of the threat actor, because one of the first steps they always do is that they enter some community that is closed, like a community of collectors, of community of hackers or yoga teachers, and they try to polarize them and they measure how successful they were in polarizing of this community and what was the angle, the axis of polarization. And it's done by sentiment analysis and name detection recognition. I also use topic modeling based on BERT. I think somebody already mentioned this technique on this event, so I will not go to the details. I will just say that what you can see on the black and white-ish picture, it's actually activity of the threat actor trying to use botnets to move the generic discussion in discussion forum of gamers from discussing how to code cheats and crack the games towards the hate against the women and even raping them in real life. This is the bubbles in the center. Each bubble on this picture stands for a certain topic and the 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 bigger like circle of the bigger bubbles says it's like generic discussion and the small bubbles in the center are the botnet. Uh, this sounds like a small thing, but I have had plenty of workshops in my country for government officials, intelligence analysts in intelligence agencies, and even for our military personnel, because using this technique, they are able to process vast amounts of text and found the, it's called foreign influence and manipulation. And it's important, again, because before that, they were supposed to read it uh, one article by another article, and it's crippling the mind, and it's also not so effective. So, uh, but now the action movie part comes in. This is the example of the, uh, the bait. 
this the fake site. If you see that the headline, the title does not fit with URL, I'm afraid you cannot read it, but if you will see the slides on your computer, you will, no worries. So this is the example of the bait. There is our president waving happy because he just approved the law that everybody is able to register on investment platform for free and then we will be all safe because AI is here so we can just take the rest and get the money from the state. Well, this uh, particle specimen had a Facebook tracking pixel with the advertisement ID, which is crucial for the thread hunting because you can cluster these, uh, these websites by this advertiser ID. And initially Meta ignored me because they didn't care. But uh, when I'm doing this research like for three years already and I collected a lot of data and have some government agencies in my back and so we were able to raise cases such big that even Meta has had to start to care and they, they started to block these advertiser IDs and they, they even started to provide us with the payment information, which is good because when the actor started, they probably never suspected that Meta would tell us, so they used their real-life identities. So we were able to, not, not put in the jail, but we were able to disable like the first generation of the scammers right away. Now they are more smart, they are using the proxies, but still, this is the good pivot point for you if you try to do it in your country, because I'm really certain that this whole campaign is happening all over the European Union and actually in NATO countries. The narratives may differ, but the, 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 the TTPs will not. The smaller picture is a sample of the so-called investment platform, but if you view the source code, it's all based in JavaScript, no, no data exchanges, nothing, it's just random numbers generator to show you how your uh, investment is proceeding and how your uh, profits are growing. But when you try to get your money back, then you will get something like, oh, we had trouble, but our manager will call you. Of course, they will never call you. Yeah, and this is the form that is used by the actor to ask you for some of your information. They are asking for name, surname, email, cell phone number. And they are also asking, it's not here, but usually they ask you also for password because by putting your details here you also register. I have grouped uh, hundreds, well, actually thousands of API endpoints collecting this kind of data. I have used various tools like Wadwoof and Nmap and some more, but that's also for another talk, because I wanted to cluster the infrastructure and generate some detection patterns for the network-based activity of the threat actor, and I did. This is Nmap, uh, I, I coded some algorithm that takes the Nmap scans and clusters the infrastructure based on the properties. And what you see is the orange uh, infrastructure that is legit and it's like every second system that's out there has the same services, same versions, same banners. But then there is the greenish part, I hope you can yeah, it's visible. And this is the curious one because this is the orchestration. This is the threat actor uses these uh, infrastructures, these servers, to actually orchestrate these campaigns all over the Europe and the rest of the world. But my visibility is due to jurisdiction of my peers restricted just to Europe and sometimes NATO countries, but not always. So when I created the detection patterns for this greenish part, I was able like to completely see what they are doing and uh, this was confirmation of the hypothesis that this information operation is really done all over the Europe. We have seen similar patterns in Germany, in France, in Italy. Not in Finland, because I would say kudos to Finnish people, they are very res resilient and I noticed that the threat actor basically gave up there. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I mentioned that I have uh, 
I have been detecting their activities on the network level. So what you see on this picture is the data science cluster that I found they were gathering the data from all over the, well, Europe, but, sorry, not Europe. This is data science cluster that was used for Czech Republic and surrounding countries, but they have similar, uh, but not this one all over the Europe. But I want to mention this one for the Czech country just for the purpose that since I was able to map the cluster at all, I observed there and I found some vulnerabilities. And this is the fun part. Since I found the vulnerabilities, they were, I was able to break into some C panels and they were using weak passwords, you name it, all the low hanging fruit. But also, they were not uh, checking the input of the data, like not the sizes, types. So I started to send in binaries, you know, hex data, weird text, whatever I, I could. So I, I was able breaking some of the servers of the cluster down because I overwhelmed that with the data. Some others started to produce some weird outputs and I could see it on, I used to have access to Twitter and I could see some of my names that I crafted for the sake of this exercise that started to reappear on Twitter on botnet posts. And one of my famous names is Ivan Stokurev. It's not really funny if you are not from Czechia, but translate it. <laughs> and this Ivan Stokurev started to be uh, somehow influential on Twitter posts and it tur turns out that since I fed their data science cluster with my data, I broke their model so that they, you know, it uh, surfaced somewhere else, which led to the verification that this works. And I took all of the methods, gave it to more authorized hands in my country, and now this is going to run in big scale. Actually, I'm hoping that NATO folks are here because this will be like the NATO-wide exercise and I'm really looking forward to see the output. There will be a lot of more events to Kurevs coming and if Russian Federation is watching, I would like to tell them that uh, the name Ivan is not that common in my country. But if they are trusting to their data, it would appear that every second male in my uh, in Czech Republic is named Ivan Stokurev and he's 160 the years old and, you know, go to luck influencing that bitches. So, uh, back to the, uh, one step back, all sorts of the data the threat actor is collecting is based, my research of this scope is based on what they are able to get from Facebook, from JavaScript, from the website, and, well, it's uh, relationship statuses, what you do, what you like, uh, some telemetry about your IP and browser. Important part is also the text in the URLs because they can use it to map relationships between people because usually what we've seen in the wild that people who are close to each other recommend to their loved ones the great investment platform because they want to get rich together, right? So this technique is called social mapping. They are creating social graph of the population. And I will elaborate on that a bit more because social graph is, okay, I will not elaborate it on more. I have to hurry, sorry. But social graph is really powerful too if you want to mo model and predict the targeted audience. This is my example that I tried on Silmarillion and I used some algorithm that I devised just, just to verify the hypothesis that you can understand the relationships between the population just by reading some text, which worked. So this is actually narrative intelligence from COVID times. I helped my government to understand what's going on and using the same techniques, I was able to attribute which narratives were uh, spreading. Uh, it's The principle is called qui bono, like who, who benefits from it. So the red one is Russia, blue one is China, and uh, we were, uh, and when they intersect, the the yellowish or violet narratives, they were important for strategic communications because they were like the breaking point. So they use this graph to drive strategic communication during the COVID years. Well, if 
you are a threat actor, you want to measure the success of your operations, and the great uh, model how to do it is to use so-called Overton window and its shift. Overton window is a concept from political science. It's not uh, like fixed, and it shifts. And by its shifts, you can tell the changes in public discourse, like what's really available and what is not, uh, not available, but what is uh, accepted. And the goal of every influence operation is to shift this overton window towards more polar polarized and aggressive narratives and means and behaviors. Because as Vlad said, if you destabilize the targeted population, then you have the chance to win the election and you can keep your tanks at home. So th this is it. And you can measure the window itself uh, using, for instance, smiles on emoticon icons on social networks. Because uh, actually Twitter used to be a great place to do it because you have the post and that then you had the reactions, smileys, and you were able to extract what people are thinking and how it shifts in the time. So this is how you determine that the, your influence operation work, or if you are on the defending side like me, you can also measure if, if the threat actor succeeded or not. If you are from law enforcement, you probably love this kind of process maps, so I tried to dissect the research to the infrastructure detection opportunities and disruption opportunities, because it may happen that you have some jurisdiction and some authority over the infosphere, so please do it. Uh, we all love kill chains, so here is one for you as well. Uh, it's separated for, again, detection opportunities and IOCs and the stages of the activity of the threat actor. The, to be able to do it, I had to gather my research group in my country, and it turned actually to become my PhD research. So we are happy to collaborate with any other researchers in this area. And I also strongly challenge you to do something similar in your country with the tools that you have at your disposal. Because again, this is important and you, we need to like protect our information space and our minds against influence operations like this before it's too late. Yeah. Um, to conclude, I would say that mind has no firewall and we all are really brilliant people doing the right thing, but uh, don't fall for the trap of invincibility because we all are uh, susceptible to cognitive warfare. So we need to know our biases and what I always say, we need to know our dark side because this is where the fun stuff happens. Thank you for your attention.